Good morning, everyone. One of the big stories, of course, front and center this morning is King Charles's cancer diagnosis. Details, though, they remain limited. But this news comes less than a year after the King's coronation back in May. And for more, we are joined by legendary journalist Lisa Laflamme. Thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. It's great to be with you, Tammy. And I think it was just, what was it, 17 months ago, yep. you and I were together in London, England, mm -hmm. uh, for the Queen's funeral. And so this King has not, I think it's, what, nine months yep. since his coronation. So it's been a pretty rough ride, I think, for him, yeah. given the news of the last day. Absolutely. And, you know, you were front and center at the coronation back in May. What was your reaction when you heard about this news? Oh, well, first of all, I thought it was a bit um, uh, jarring over the over January just to see the king very publicly announcing that he was going into the hospital. Also, Princess Catherine, Prince of Wales, Princess of Wales, also in hospital undergoing some kind of treatment. So there was a lot surrounding the health of the, the key royals. And then yesterday to hear this news, obviously, you, you know, over the years that we have known this king, um, he's a stoic man. He's always dealt with everything with with strength and humor and responsibility. And I think for him, this would be an incredibly frustrating experience because it sidelined him. Let's face it. Early on in his reign, he's sidelined. Um, it is unprecedented, though, that we're learning so much about the fact that he officially has cancer. He is undergoing treatment, although they won't say if it's chemo or radiotherapy. But the point is, historically, we never knew anything about the Queen and her health or anybody. So this is a very positive move, I think, by the royal family for him to decide to be public. It cuts down on speculation. Yeah. But more than anything, I don't suppose there's a family in the world that hasn't dealt with exactly this moment. So, you know, cancer, sadly, is the great leveler. And for the king to be public about this to this degree, I think it's forced a lot of people to sort of um, even check out those websites, yeah. find out about screening, <laughs> all of the things that, yeah. that we should all do, really. Right, and the National Health Service in the UK actually saying that they did see a bump in in searches so it is something that is getting people thinking and going ahead to try to take care of themselves as well as people are are seeing this through the common person's eyes as well um you know when you hear about the news itself again just 18 months into his reign and the transparency that we have seen uh, the prince has been or the king rather has been transparent we go to think about prince william it's one of the thoughts that we have next what it means for prince william and for queen camilla as well now that the king has been sidelined That's absolutely true it's a great point and i think there's a lot of mechanisms in place um these counselors of the state they're referred to now it's really important to say that nobody according to buckingham palace is panicking um, the king is 75 years old. He, he's very fit, actually. As we all know, he's maintained a healthy lifestyle with all this organic farming, which I yeah. actually just saw myself. I was in Highgrove just a couple of weeks ago, and in the little town of Tetbury in the Cotswolds, all of the king's um, harvest is in these shops. So you, can, you know that he has been a healthy man. They're not panicking. Um, they won't even disclose how serious this cancer is or what it is. But it absolutely does mean that at 41, Prince William and the other members of the royal family have to, have to step up, if you will. And, and don't forget that today is today, no, tomorrow, Wednesday, Prince William will himself just be getting back to work because right. he's, of course, been taking care of the kids and monitoring while his wife underwent her own abdominal surgery. So, um, and Queen Camilla, you know, there's just some kind of irony here that this woman who for so many decades was maligned is now going to be the front face of the royal family while the king moves back from public duties mm -hmm. Also important to note that he will still be doing his state duties, so those now famous red boxes that arrive every day with parliamentary papers, he still has to acknowledge, read, sign. He'll still be doing his weekly meeting with the Prime Minister. He'll still be doing Zoom meetings. That's what they're telling us anyway. Mm -hmm. You just won't see him um, wandering around doing the normal royal duties, and that will be, as you say, on the shoulders of largely Prince William, 
Queen Camilla, mm -hmm. um, Princess Royal, Princess Anne. I think this will be crucial for her to step up as well right now. Right, and you talk about some of the royal duties that we right now will not see King Charles be taking part in. We know that there is an official tour that was also mm -hmm. scheduled to happen here in Canada. We have Commonwealth Day that is coming up as well. So everyone will be keeping a close eye, obviously, to see when he comes back. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, how do you think this is going to affect the mood in the UK, considering that they just went through this massive mm. change with the loss of Queen Elizabeth II, 70 years into her reign? Yeah. I think what, what I've seen just by watching what's going on in the UK, mm. um, first of all, I will say he's become inc incredibly popular yeah. during his reign. He is a popular king. Um, he has stepped up in a way that I think a lot of people didn't know he would. Camilla is very popular. Um, so I think there's been a, an outpouring of support for him, not just inside the UK, but certainly around the world. Here in Canada as well, Prime Minister Trudeau was one of the first to put messages out there. So I, I think... Everybody is really just concerned about what is the level of, of, of treatment that's required. Um, don't forget his own grandfather, King George VI, was sidelined with cancer. Yeah. And the Regency Act of 1937 was brought in for exactly a situation like this. Now, his grandfather had a lung removed from cancer in Buckingham Palace in the early 1950s, so we saw Queen Elizabeth, princess at the time, uh, have to step up. So I think the mechanisms are in place within the royal family that these duties will be spread around, but more than anything, if you look at the man and the woman on the street in the UK right now and across the Commonwealth, because as you say, we are one of the 14 uh, nations of the realm as well, mm -hmm. and um, people just wish him well at his age, there is a lot to be confident about mm -hmm. when you think about the number of people who have cancer. Um, and I think the stat I read is that more than half are actually um, come through it. So yes. there's just a lot of support that, that uh, he will too. As I said before, it's almost like cancer is the one thing. Certainly he confronts his own mortality as so many people around the world are forced to do when that diagnosis comes in and so he becomes a role model to people to to take care of business so to speak with yeah. their own bodies uh, a great equalizer unfortunately mm. in this case and uh, the palace has said they are positive about his treatment which is great uh, this morning we also heard from uh, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak saying that they apparently caught this early so we are hoping for the best. It is It Charles. is an interesting thing when you think about the fact that he went in for an enlarged prostate mm -hmm. um, and it was during that procedure. And again, this is an echo of so many people who go in for one thing and a cancer is detected. But as you say, uh, he is wholly positive about his recovery mm -hmm. and, um, and the treatment. But we do know that chemo, if it's chemo or even radiation, can really knock the stuffing out of you. Right. So we won't see him um, publicly, but I suppose we just all wish him well that this treatment, which is so hard on so many, mm. Um, he's in good hands. Yeah, definitely. All right. Lisa Laflamme, thank you so much for joining us. Great it's so to lovely you. to see you thank here you, today. Thank you, Tammy. Great appreciate to meet it. you. Oh.